and I think I have just set out precisely what is the case, but I will do so again. I think it's unfortunate, Mr Speaker, that you somewhat muddied the waters by un-responding to the business of the House uh, statement. I had made it perfectly clear what was the case, and I'm perfectly able to do that for myself. I will set it out again for the Honourable Gentleman. Colleagues, I address my remarks to colleagues. For the avoidance of doubt, I haven't muddied any waters. What I have done is to quote the factual position. Very specifically, I have quoted statements from the Treasury bench on the 29th of January, the 31st of January and the 6th of February. And I know the leader will be interested in this because she's just talked about the importance of treating colleagues with respect, which presumably implies listening to them when they're speaking. So the position is extremely clear. I don't try to tell the right honourable lady how to do her job, and I treat her with great courtesy, and will continue to do so. Nobody is going to tell this Speaker how to stand up for and persistently champion the rights of Parliament. I have done it, I am doing it, and I'll go on doing it, and I couldn't care less who tries to obstruct me. That is the fact. That is the reality. That is the mission and responsibility of the Speaker of the House of Commons. Bravo.